but with success comes survival to endure the nightly battles against envious opponents. He trash talked with the best of them. He was fond of informing his frustrated adversaries that he had them in his torture chamber as he countered their every adjustment with a new wrinkle of his own. McHale was often threatened by opponents bent on intimidation. John Long, rebound, Parrish, battle underneath, foul, Mahorn and Parrish go nose to nose. He knew this was coming. Long to his left hand, his Parrish with a good rebound and Mahorn from behind. And he gets the ball and they say Mahorn, and now Mahorn is going to say, I'm asserting myself here. Bring in some quicker people. McHale and Mahorn get tangled up, and here we go. You see the problem you have here, Skip, is that they got the reputation. Of, there you see McHale leaning. Mahorn's got him. They got a little clamp of the arms, pushing each other. There's the little show. They had locked arms, and Mahorn didn't really do anything, and all of a sudden, McHale went after him. And, you know, like you pointed out, Skip, if you don't really like a team or like a particular player, uh, sometimes you look for a situation to, to react to. Two men to three. The fill-ins had their hands full in Boston where the Celtics beat the Heat in double overtime. Second quarter of that game, some hand-to-hand -hand combat underneath. Kurt Thomas and Purvis Ellison. Now watch Purvis with a little shove and a left hand from Kurt Thomas. Ellison took stitches inside his mouth for that one, and of course, fines and suspensions followed. Thomas, 10,000 bucks in a game. Ellison was not suspended, was fined 2,500, as were his teammates, Alton Lister and Eric Williams for leaving the bench, each suspended for one game. Also in that game, do you see what happened to Billy Owens? He ran into the pick set by Todd Day, and there were some anxious moments for the Heat because they thought he had dislocated the shoulder. Turns out it is a bad, bad bruise. Purvis is bleeding profusely, and Purvis wants to get him right now after what he did to him. And they're going to throw Purvis out of the ball game. Somebody's got to get a hold of Purvis here is what's going to happen. And let's see what happened if we can. Left. There it is. Oh, he hit him with the left hook? Yeah. And he hit him with an elbow to begin with. Let's see it again. There. There was the shot. On the rebound. And then he pushes him away and hits him again. And Purvis was bleeding from the first shot, not the second. The last victory was very frustrating for the Celtics. We're going to show you now and let you listen as the president of the club, Red Arback, charged the officials' locker room at the conclusion of the game. He was upset at the work of Earl Strong and Hugh Evans. You will hear Red's voice in the background. Now, what concerned Red the most is the fact that the Lakers shot 14 free throws in the fourth quarter and the Celtics only won. As Tommy Heinsohn pointed out moments ago, however, the Celtics' inability to get the ball inside might have affected them at the free throw line. If you can't get the ball inside, you're not going to go to the line. It is possible that Arback will be fined for his actions. One other thing, Red always leaves a message. The alternate and the third official in that locker room was Jake O'Donnell during that outburst. Jake O'Donnell is working tonight's game in the Garden. We'll see how it unfolds. Two for the Lakers. And Worthy is decked. And Worthy doesn't like it. And Greg Kite was tagged. Both coaches have come on to try to cool things down. Kite just come at him and really take him down. That was a hard foul. Now Worthy was going to get it. He should have not come up and started swinging. And Kite comes back at him. What's going to happen now is in the lap of the guards as far as Worthy and Kite are concerned. How would you compare that to the Lane Beer Bird incident in Detroit? Different situation, I think. Each play is different. Going in, Dennis Johnson commits the foul, and Kite, both of them, with a hard takedown, which has been part of a lot of what we've seen in the playoffs. So, no one was thrown out of the game, and the officials seem to handle it very well. Adams will check back in. 
Shumay with a second stand. Nice look out. Watch this. Look at this. Silas St. Shumay. Hold it. Hold it, babe. Good go, Jake O'Donnell. He got in there just in the nick of time. Because they were really going to go haul off and smack each other. Friday night. Let's watch this, Brent. Shumay came right back up over his back, and there was the elbow. That's what hit him in the nose. Left elbow right to the back of the head. Uh -huh. Roby and Johnson are very upset at each other. The foul was called on Roby for the pick. Was it called on Roby? Well, on Henderson. Was it called on Henderson? All right. And Johnson's the one who... Johnson now, went now. over and now Rulin knocked Henderson down. This is going to erupt in about a moment. Rulin and Henderson had their words in Washington. Now they're shoving O'Donnell. Bill Fitch gets pulled out of the pack. Break out of hostilities on Saturday. And now watch. Now. Watch Johnson. After. Johnson watch moves when he in. Gets up. And a foul call here on oh, Henderson. Oh, Henderson I see. Dropped the ball Henderson head. drops the ball on okay. him. That was the same yeah. somewhat there. Now Dang. Johnson gives him an elbow back. Rick grabs the little guy by the uh, shoulder and plays a few words on him. And, and then everything now, gets in a turmoil. Now the peacemakers jump in, and that's when all hell really breaks loose. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Coos, in these situations, were you, uh, oh, yeah. you consider yourself, went, would you consider I, yourself oh, a peacemaker? Oh, I'll tell you. I went for that water boy in a hurry. Those little guys never fooled with me. Get that little guy in the, uh, handing out the there's paper four, there's cups. There's Henderson hitting the deck yeah. when Roland pushed Roland him away. Roland gives him a forearm. <laughs> Jake O'Donnell alertly gets in here in a hurry. Well, now we have been able to see what precipitated the whole thing. If you expect to win the game. Well, that's one of the few breakdowns. Boy, did ML Carr and Dawkins collide out here at midcourt. And now we're going to have a foul called as Carr and Dawkins are upset. That was started at midcourt when Dawkins set a pick that Carr ran into and then pushed off. And Earl Strom says, wait a minute, I'm in control of this game. You just settle down. And I think he met it. We're not afraid to give the ball to Danny Ainge in any circumstances anymore. Today, Ainge is a garden favorite, but he owns another image on the road where more often than not, he's regarded as public enemy number one. I think it has more to do with my style of play. Um, people misinterpret it as being dirty and cheap. I, I just think I play hard. That's a foul on Green as he just threw Grandison to the floor trying to fight through a screen that was being set and then stepped right over it. Followed by Cindy Green. And Reggie Lewis That's coming back, back in for from Boston. Boston. Grandison, a four-on-one break to Reggie Lewis. He's fouled by Oakley. Pass to Reggie Lewis, and Oakley makes what I think is a good foul. He got in front of him, made the play, does not Reggie allow Lewis. the opportunity for a three-point basket or an easy two. Pearl tending situation. 55-42, and now we got something going between McHale and Lister underneath. Coming right at him, and he was going to get by him. The Bucks with only one team foul. Now you see Lister taking, now watch. Archibald swings at Lister, and Lister gets a technical foul. Now you explain that to me. That's the Selleck uh, overplay, just, you know, just getting any continuity. I love that. Uh, uh, Richardson shoves Roby. Now Truck Robinson is over. Richardson keeps shoving Roby. All right, Chris Bradley and Grenfell up to the right-hand side of your screen. Now they're well, shoving they're each, each other. Each other kind uh, of. Bradley uh, lifts his hands up as they go out of the picture. So uh, we're going to uh, see the punch here. Let's, well, there. Whoa. He, 
takes a few steps and now he and Roby go at it and Roby is livid coming through the middle he seems to have a step on Henderson well he caught him okay, with an elbow he got him yeah he got yep. him good hit him with so an elbow the reaction then was not unwanted uh, like, there's another there's another look at it yeah Richardson. Richardson Richardson's out of the game for well, a punching foul and uh, now they're go now they're going at it and Grenfell is in it they're right out yeah. in front of us and this is going to turn into something very bad if they don't get uh, the police out here yeah. very quickly you'll be Brown doing the right thing. Richardson He's has been thrown out of the game missed. Jeff Malone the rebound the shot he hit I like him. I like him at Mississippi State. He was a tough competitor. And Mahorn and McHale are having words right now. The Boston Celtics, and there's a tussle on the floor. Oh, and Buckner just got decked. Henderson and Frankie Johnson are going at it. Now the frustrations, Dick, of a long season. Now ML Carr and Malone do a little pushing. Malone throws a shot at him. Now Cunningham and Carr go at it. And in. Boy, he just hit the floor about as hard as you'll ever see anyone uh, hit it. Follows it up with this play. Again goes down. This time they'll pick up the foul on ML Carr. Oh, Donald anticipated it because the whole Paul scene wants is a right piece here of in front of our bench. Right here in front of our broadcast position. Both officials now in front of uh -huh. Carr. Oh. ML steps in to try to force him out of the play. Obviously a lot of contact. Jay did not like wow. it as he looks right into the camera. Good look. Blocked away by Rodman. Klein. Now Klein and Rodman bang at one another. To draw the foul right there. There's a nice block by Robin. Now Klein takes it away. He's grabbed once. Now he's fouled. Then he's held on to. He's just got him. And see, an overreaction on the part of Klein. You know, get your hands off of me. Robin really didn't do anything. Now Reggie knocking down the long tray. Going to turn around and address the Boston crowd. Don't you know it's the whiskers? <laughs> Bird takes it in traffic and gets hammered. Now that's kind of a play of Larry Bird is. I mean, he really got hammered by two guys. Just dropped the ball and nicely walked away. That's what he wanted was the foul. He made him foul them. Watch. I mean, this is, this oh, is a major league foul in. right here. Boom. And beer very quick to say. Yeah, it's all part of the game, Larry. Yeah. Larry knows it is. He's perfectly willing to do the same thing up the other end. Well, he'll give it and he'll take it. Biggest lead for either team right now. And Dumars is fouled with one second on the clock. And now they say it's a foul against Detroit. And Lane Beer is close to a technical foul. And he's got it. We're going to see why he's upset. Bird is trying to fight through the pick. The Celtics' fabled floor, of course, built during World War II because there was a shortage of long planks of wood, so we had to build it in the parquet fashion. And then when the arena started construction eight years ago, the Magic, in order to emulate the Celtics' success, decided to build a similar parquet floor. In fact, they won their first ever playoff game on a parquet floor in Boston last year. But the big difference between the two floors, this one doesn't have any dead spots that always used to make the ball bounce the Celtics' way, as Bill can attest to. And Bill used to call them grateful dead spots. <laughs> there were no dead spots on that beautiful temple floor there. A religious shrine to Boston Garden.